Welcome back to the C Space studio here at CES 2023. I'm James Kotecki, joined right now by Kenny Mitchell, CMO of Snap. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So, Kenny, uh, let's just start by having you define what does Snap, the brand, mean right now as we're heading into 2023? Oh, that's a wonderful question mm -hmm. and a very timely question. Um, Snapchat is a visual app that's all about it helping to enhance your relationships with your friends, your family, and the world around you. And we like to say kind of the things that you care most about, like the people you're close to, mm. the things in culture that you really care about, Snapchat helps to make those good things better, right? Yeah. So we actually are just uh, in the process of launching a new campaign to help dimensionalize this idea around enhancing relationships. Um, and the consumer handle for it is, wait do you see this. Mm. And it's actually language that people commonly use if you're a Snapchatter. You want to show somebody something really cool yeah. on, on, your, uh, on your device. You're like, hey, hold on, wait, wait, where do you see this? This, mm -hmm. is, this is really awesome. And we kicked it off with um, an integration with um, Ryan Seacrest and the Rocking Eve um, New Year's Eve program, mm -hmm. where he and Liza Koshi, who is his uh, kind of co-host, they demonstrated the most popular lenses um, mm -hmm. from Snapchat over the, the last few years. And it's a part of our strategy to try to help to bring Snapchat out into the world. Yeah. Um, and show some of the fun, the quirkiness, and the awesomeness that comes with the, with the platform. And what are the demographics of the user base, and what are you targeting as far as your growth? Yeah, so our, I'd say our core demographic is 13 to 34 year old folks that are like really, really comfortable and fluent with um, digital and mobile devices. But yeah. what's really interesting is um, it, it kind of depends on the market. So we have a tremendous, tremendous amount of um, kind of depth um, here in the U.S., but there are about 20 of the major kind of mobile markets um, where Snap is is incredibly popular and has over 75 percent uh, penetration with people that are you know 13 to 34 years old. Mm -hmm. So um, I was just in Europe uh, this past summer, and if you go to a place like Norway, two out of three people in Snap in uh, in Norway use Snapchat. Okay, so, so it's got to be beyond the 34 year olds. Yeah, it, it's yeah. Be far beyond the 34 year olds mm -hmm. and. In France, we are the most popular um, uh, digital social media platform um, across ages 13 to over 50. So it kind of depends a bit on the market, but I'd say like our, our core and bullseye is like that Gen Z and young millennial. And, and do you spend a lot of time maybe behind closed doors thinking about how you define yourselves relative to other social media apps, what you're doing, what you're not doing, that they are doing, that, that's giving you some of that edge? What's really interesting is that Snapchat, in, in a lot of ways, is kind of like the antidote um, to traditional social media. Mm -hmm. So it was created by um, two young founders, um, Evan and Bobby, um, at Stanford University, and they were people that actually grew up with social media. So they yeah. went to college with um, platforms like uh, Facebook that actually existed. And they had this one really interesting and core insight. When you had kind of the propagation of mobile devices, and you had this desire to kind of be able to kind of grow and evolve as a person and not kind of live by the things that permanently exist out in the digital space. Mm -hmm. They said, hey, if people begin to use um, the camera and you know, videos and pictures to help communicate, mm -hmm. um, we feel like that's a really compelling use case. And if you add on the notion of ephemerality, so those photos and videos actually disappear. So you're not like locked into yeah. an idea or a communication that you created when you were 15 or 21 or 25. You actually can run for office later. <laughs> um, those two kind of insights came together and yeah. that was kind of the, you know, the, 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 the launch or the hatch of Snapchat. Yeah. And it's since then, this notion of this visual communication that is personal between friends, not a bunch of followers and fans, but between friends and family has been you know, really, really effective. And that's why we've seen so much um, continued growth on the platform. Um, let's talk about the mobile devices and just generally the devices that this technology is running on right now. Um, we're here at CES, obviously everybody's talking about the latest devices, but what are you practically thinking about as far as devices, maybe beyond the smartphone, um, for, or, or just whatever the smartphone will turn into and where it is right now, for how Snap is actually gonna be interacting, Snapchat will interact with people? Yeah, I think that's a wonderful question. I, one of the things that is a massive priority for us is augmented reality. Snapchat is one of the pioneers in augmented reality. It's like overlaying computing into the real world. And um, you saw some of our early, I'd say, experiments with wearable devices with the spectacles, yes. um, right? The spectacles glasses. 
and we believe that augmented reality delivers a tremendous amount of value. Um, our community actually proves that out, so we have over 250 million people that use augmented reality experiences every single day. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually like yep. it's a it's a kind of developed and mature market in this space. I mean, of you, Snapchat. you mean you talk yes. about lenses? Do you, or do you use those terms synonymously? Yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. correct. The lenses are augmented reality yeah. experiences, and right now they are held on your little mobile device. Mm -hmm. But we believe over the fullness of time that you actually will have wearable devices mm -hmm. that are going to be powered through the camera and through augmented reality that will be yeah. hands-free and will just open up all kinds of use cases mm -hmm. and opportunities and that's what the yeah. team is working really hard on right now. And do you think I will somehow like Neuralink my brain to the glasses so where I don't actually have to use my hands to control the visual lenses that I'm putting over the reality that I see? That's a great question. <laughs> like I, I don't think the technology is there, but I, I, I could see a world you know, you know, over the course of the next yeah. few decades where that could be possible. Um, do you see what you're doing as part of building the metaverse? Do you use that term? Do you think it's a good, a good term to use? You know, I think the metaverse, what's interesting about it is it's a bit of a catchphrase yeah. for the broader industry of things that are past Web 2.0. Like mm -hmm. all of these future technologies that didn't really have a handle. So yeah. some people will talk about the metaverse and refer to NFTs or crypto or the blockchain right. or AR or VR. So it's kind of this handle for this next generation of computing. At Snap, we are firmly, firmly focused on augmented reality mm -hmm. because we believe that it's kind of the next and yeah. future computing platform. Do you, this is getting a little bit philosophical, but I might as well give it a shot. Yeah. Do you ever think about the philosophical nature of what it means for me to be able to walk around the world and, and really actually change what I see and what I experience and for have you and I to have dramatically different visualizations of the world? I mean, in a sense, I suppose we already do that because we have different brains and different backgrounds and perspectives. But do you, do you think about what that would mean if, if this was taken to kind of the extreme? Yeah, it's a wonderful question. And it, it actually reminds me of a book that I was reading on my flight mm -hmm. over here. And it's, uh, the book is actually about culture mm -hmm. and how so much of the way that we see the world is kind of based on who we are yeah. <laughs> versus based on what is actually the yeah. things that you see and the things that you experience. And I think what's interesting in terms of what augmented reality can offer is a way to, in some ways, customize your experience based on things that you care about, mm -hmm. which I think can be really, really powerful. Um, but it does put a burden um, on, you know, from an ethical perspective on how do you, how do you manage that? How do you do that mm -hmm. in a way um, that, that makes a lot of sense for consumers going forward? And, and maybe I'd want to know if there was someone out there who was looking at the world through some kind of radically different lens. I maybe they would just want some kind of a heads up on what that lens <laughs> was so I could know maybe how they see things. And I suppose there could be physical safety issues at some point, but I don't know. We're going down a crazy rabbit hole here. I'm going to pull it back okay. to the actual reality. Great. I want to talk for a minute about your history because you have a history of working with great brands like Gatorade, McDonald's, um, and those are uh, drinks, right? Those are, or those are foods. Those are things that you actually consume physically. Uh, with Snap, I imagine it's pretty different. Did you learn lessons from those brands and those experiences that you still apply in your current role? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, those experiences I had with Gatorade, as you mentioned, with McDonald's, those were brands that people cared deeply about. Um, people had personal connections to, yeah. and the value that they delivered, like very, very tangible, very, very real, and very, very, very understood. It was imperative for me when I first kind of joined the Snapchat organization to really understand the consumer and the value that is driven through the Snapchat platform. And what you find is that you have folks that are just as incredibly passionate um, about Snapchat um, and its ability to allow them to stay close and connected and communicate yeah. and do things creatively with their, mm -hmm. their friends and family. And so there's like a really clear and easy parallel mm -hmm. there between like a, a passion point. One might yeah. be around sports, one might be around food, one might be around family, one might be around like technology and communicating. Um, so there, there's some good parallels there that I've been able so to So you index to that passion and everything else kind of branches out from there. That's exactly right. Um, I want to ask you about creativity. Uh, I'm reading this here because I think Fast Company once called you one of the most creative people in business. So congratulations on that. Um, is, your, is creativity for you something that's intuitive? Is there something that you can teach? Is there a lesson that you can give us? How do you think about your own creativity? Yeah, I think of creativity through a few different vectors. You know, so 
creativity, a lot of times people think, you know, creativity means you're like some form of artist, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, yeah. and, and I don't think that that's always true. Sometimes creativity comes from the way that you think about and try to solve problems. Mm -hmm. Like creative problem solving is like a tremendously valuable form of creativity. Um, when it comes to marketing and advertising, it's always that combination of the art and the science. Yeah. So, you know, the, the science component, like you have to have the insights right. You have to really truly understand um, your, con your consumer, what they believe in, what you know drives value for them, where, where their passions lie, where they're motivated, like kind of understanding um, those insights. When it comes to the art side, that requires a bit of subjectivity because there's like tastes you know, mm -hmm. related to that. And, and what I try to do is like, I try to stay in inspired by things that I see around me, things yeah. that I, I experience, try to create safe environments for my team so they feel comfortable being um, creative, throwing out mm -hmm. wild and funny and interesting mm -hmm. ideas. And then try to think about things through the lens of um, kind of this, this framework that I often use. Um, it's an acronym called CASE. So there's the C is for creativity, the A is for authentic, the S is for strategic, and the E is for emotion. So we're thinking of like big ideas. One, you want creativity is just kind of approaching things in a, a kind of a unique yeah. way, right? Yeah. Authentic is like, is it relevant and authentic to your consumer sure. and customer? And also, is it real and relevant to your brand? Strategic is, does it actually answer your brief, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So right. like creativity without strategy is art. And wow. I'm not in the mm -hmm. business of art. Mm -hmm. I actually am in the business of trying to create um, some type of conditions mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you know, a consumer to, to, to take an action. And then E is emotions. Like, does it make you feel something? Does it make you laugh? Does it um, inspire you? Does it make you think? And um, that kind of model and that kind of mindset is, is like, that's how you try to foster that environment of creativity. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, most of the best advertising work and creative work that you probably love and admire that so many other people do, you would think like, oh, you know what? I actually see kind of this like framework of where, how it's creative, how it's authentic to mm -hmm. the brand, yeah. what the strategy might be and, and what it makes me feel. Well, thank you so much for bringing your creative, authentic, strategic <laughs> emotion to us here in the C-Space studio. Kenny Mitchell of Snap, thanks so much. Oh, thanks for having me. And thank you so much for watching. So many more great conversations with thought leaders in media, marketing, and branding are on the way right here from CES 2023 at the C-Space studio, sponsored by Salesforce.